Hey all, welcome to another episode of Mike Likes. Uh, for this episode, I thought I would show you guys what it looks like when your ASI Air, in my case, it's an ASI Air Mini, as you can see there, I have it mounted to my telescope. What does it look like when this little mini computer drives the Evolution mount? Well, what I've done tonight is I've got my camera connected to one of the USB ports, which is this cable, and then I've got the actual mount connected with a USB A to USB B micro port, which goes all the way over to this hand controller. So what I'm gonna do is take the telescope out to do a rough star sense alignment. And when I say rough, it's a pretty darn good alignment because we're gonna use the star sense camera for the alignment, but we're gonna get an alignment. I'll slew the telescope to a star. I don't know, maybe Beetlejuice or Rigel. And then I'm gonna have the ASI Air Mini um, talk to the app on my iPad, and I'll show you it on my iPad, and we'll drive the scope all night through the iPad. And the benefit of that is that it's about 30 degrees out tonight, and I'm not interested in being freezing. I'll let the telescope freeze, and I'll be inside my garage where it's about 65, and uh, that's a whole lot more convenient, and that's just the magic of five gigahertz Wi-Fi. So bear with me when I rejoin you. We'll have this telescope roughly aligned on a star, and uh, we'll use the ASI Air app from there to navigate around the night sky and take some pictures. All right, back with you guys here. I went ahead and I've done my star sense alignment with the telescope outside. I've got the ASI Air app running on my iPad. I'm just entering it here. You can see my latitude and longitude. You can see that the app knows that I've got it connected to my Evo mount. And here we are. I've actually told the star sense alignment to first select a bright star. In this case, Betelgeuse is the star I'm using, which is near Orion. And that's a nice bright star in the sky to confirm that we are where we are. So right now the ASI Air, as you can see, is taking a 10 second exposure just to see where it landed. And it should see the star of Betelgeuse right coming up here once it pulls that down from the um, from the camera. You can see it's loading um, over Wi-Fi and it goes pretty fast, five, 10 megabytes a second. And yep, that's Betelgeuse right there. It's a reddish star. It's in good focus. You can see it's got those um, kind of diffraction spikes there. That means the star is in focus and it already knows that it's aligned. Do you see that the mount is happy with where ASI Air has put it or maybe the other way around, but it's, it's basically plate solved because I've now gone to objects and it knows that's my frame of, of vision with my camera and I'm in the Orion constellation on Betelgeuse. So the red is where I'm going to target, which is on attack, which is the Horsehead Nebula. And you can see the Horsehead Nebula here. So that's where we're going to go next. And we're going to frame the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula. And when I go to, that's going to tell the mount to slew the telescope over the Horsehead Nebula. I don't have to go outside. At this point, I'm in my garage. It's warm. I don't have to worry about it. You can see that blue frame. That is the telescope coming over. It's already slewed over there. And now it's validating that it's skewed to the right point by taking a picture and making sure things are centered. So it detected, it's solving. Let's see what it says. Okay, it's recentering. Sometimes it recenters if it doesn't like the, the alignment the first time. See how it says uncentered, retry once, and it should get it on the next time. Okay, so ASI Air has found the horse head and validated it's centered, and you can see the horse head is smack dab. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a stack. I'm going to use flat, dark, and bias frames to kind of cancel out light pollution and sensor dust and, you know, all sorts of oddities that can be in my frame so that when I stack, it's getting all my light frames, just basically taking 10-second pictures of the horse head nebula, and it's using the data that it has in my bias and dark frames and flats to cancel that out, and we should get a pretty nice picture here of the Horsehead Nebula. Now you can make stacks as long as you like. For EAA, it's not that important. That's mostly an astrophotography function, but you'll see when these um, pictures of the Horsehead come in in just a few seconds how nice this is looking. And all I really did was slew it using the ASI Air app because it knows where it is in the sky. So when we go to our next object after the Horsehead, I'll show you that, that's going to be a very straightforward jump to the next object that we're checking. So let's just see what it's doing here with the stacks and you'll see an immediate improvement. Yeah, look at that much detail it's teasing out. I'm just gonna play with the histogram as you see with these sliders here with my highlights and shadows and 
oh, it's coming in beautifully. And remember, guys, I have a Bortle seven-ish driveway with a lot of light pollution. There's a Costco and a Target nearby. This is the suburbs of Cincinnati, so it's not like I have a dark sky. But look what I'm seeing in my driveway, the Horsehead Nebula. You couldn't see this in a 25-inch Dobsonian telescope. You need a camera to do it. And a Hyperstar that brings your SCT down to f1.9 instead of f10 allows this to be taken in all of 10 seconds. And is it going to win astrophotography photo of the year? Absolutely not. But are you going to be able to see things that as they kind of look in books and online? Yeah, you get a pretty good idea of what these objects look like. Doing a little movie magic here, I've fast forwarded to a point in our stack where I've taken about 8 minutes of exposure with 20 stacked. You can see on the bottom menu there, this is about what uh, 7 or 8 minutes of total integration time. And you see how much the image has been cleaned up. That's a clear horsehead nebula and the flame nebula looking beautiful right above it. And obviously there's no up or down or left and right in space, so you can invert this graphic, you can rotate it because you'll usually see the horse head facing up, but that's just the way my camera's positioned. But um, this is the beauty of EAA with an SCT and not all that much equipment. Let's go to the next object. All right, we're gonna go to an object very nearby the horse head nebula. We're gonna go to the Orion Nebula, which is right over to the right on the screen at least of where we are so very quick jump you see where we are the scopes in blue the targets in red i'm going to tap go to and in just a second my scope is going to move from all attack over to m42 the orion nebula and you can see it's doing so right here it's going to overlay with my target we've got the orion nebula beautifully in frame that's the benefit of the asi 294 mc camera it's fairly wide which is what you want for successful eaa too narrow a camera and you can run into trouble so that's kind of like what we can expect it to look like we've of course got our horse head picture here which i've saved because i can take a screenshot i'm going to exit this stack and now i'm going to start taking pictures of the orion nebula in just a second and you know, seven seconds is probably too much exposure for something as bright as the Orion Nebula, but we could still take a look at what we got. It should still look pretty impressive. So we just took a 10 second picture. You can see on the bottom of my iPad screen, it's loading that uh, 10 megs a second. Here it comes. <laughs> That's the Orion Nebula, if I ever saw it. I mean, it's it's a little overexposed and stuff. We could probably back the exposure down some. But yeah, uh, teasing it out, that's a pretty cool picture right there. And it's kind of a gimme uh, because the M42 is a very easy nebula to shoot. It's pretty bright. You can see this one pretty well in binoculars. But you can see that the trapezium, which are the stars in the very middle of the core, are being blown out right now. It's just too white. That's just white data. But we can adjust our exposure and, and work from there. But yeah, the, the gentle ease of EAA, right? We're, uh, we're literally next door to where the Horsehead Nebula is, but we didn't have to go to our telescope to tell it anything. We did it all from our iPad. Pretty darn neat. Now we'll look at another object nearby, the Pleiades. It's a seven sister stars, not far from the Orion Nebula. It's Messier number 45. So we'll have our telescope slew over there, and ASI Air is already moving it. You see my blue square moving over to the target, which is the red square. And we're going to slew to the target position. Let's take a look and see. And it's going to validate that it's in the right spot. It'll it'll take a picture, a quick picture, and see, and count the stars and see. Let's see what we've got. Solving. Detected 555 stars. That's a lot of stars. Um, it's rechecking because it didn't exactly get it. So it's uncentered, so it's retrying once more. It should get it on the second try. I've never seen it not, but sometimes it just needs to refine its alignment so that everything's centered properly. Let's take a look here. Yep, now we're centered. So when we take our next picture here, of course, CM42. Up oh, there's the Pleiades, seven sister stars. I mean, this is this is an object where you can tease a lot of nebulosity and stuff out of it. Um, but yeah, it took us all of a few seconds to go there. Um, you can do some other things. You can detect star sizes if you're so inclined. You can annotate it so you can absolutely know, yep, I'm in the right spot. These are the right stars. Lots of objects in ASI Air just to demo it. But yeah, these are the stars. You can see my focus is slipping a little bit. I would need to go to my telescope and focus or use an electronic focusing wheel. But um, yeah, the Pleiades were on target. We see that there. Uh, it's interesting. The Pleiades are one of those objects that's close enough to Earth that you don't have to use a telescope. Um, right now, Uranus is nearby. We can take a quick peek at that just to get an idea of how fast these things are. I'm targeting to it. I'm moving my telescope right over to Uranus. Let's see. Uh, we've got our target, and here comes the telescope, the blue square, the blue rectangle moving right over Uranus. 
And um, we can observe a planet that's, uh, what is Uranus, uh, three and a half billion miles away? Something like that. Yeah, we can actually see that from our suburban light polluted driveway. Yep, we're lined on Uranus. We'll check, we'll take a quick picture of Uranus here. There it is, smack dab in the middle. That's Uranus. Now we're not in proper focus for a planet. We don't have it set up for planetary motion, so it's not going to be as perfect as uh, deep sky objects that we've been looking at, but we could get a perfect picture of Uranus there. And I would use the telescope at F10, not with a hyperstar, if I really wanted to take a picture of Uranus, which is totally possible with the solution. You just need a uh, different focal length uh, to do so. And um, just like that, I see that Jupiter is next door to Uranus, so we'll slew to Jupiter. And we're just cruising from the ice giants to the gas giant, the biggest one himself right there. And scope went right over target. We should be right on Jupiter right now, so we'll take a quick picture and take a look. I expect this picture to be blown out. Yep, it's it's there. You can see the moons, the, the Jupiter moons right around it. But uh, we are with a hyperstar, which is uh, extremely wide imaging. We would want to be at F10 to take a proper planetary picture or really video of Jupiter. But, uh, you know, it's right there next to Uranus, and uh, you'd show people the moons. And, yeah, even if you clear up the focus, you can see that it's just blown out because we just have too much speed on it. But that's simple. Another feature I really like about ASI Air is that it's got a catalog of objects that are inside it. So you don't necessarily have to know where everything is. It gives you tonight's best. And of course, it's got Andromeda and it's got the looks like the witch. Um, yeah, the witch head nebula. Uh, it's got so many different things that are up tonight. It's a wonderful November night of observing. Let's go ahead and slew to M31. That's the Andromeda galaxy. And you can see the Andromeda galaxy is so large that it doesn't even fit in the frame the way I have it positioned of my camera. I would have to rotate my camera to encompass it, my rectangle, but it would fit with the hyperstar if I turned it horizontally. But in any case, for the purposes of this demo, we'll just take some pictures of M31 tonight and see how that looks. So we've just slewed to it. All right, there we are, M31, looking like a little blob, but I'm sure we can tease out a little more detail with a short exposure here. And you can see the nebulosity around it of the spiral galaxy coming through. Yeah, wow. That's an entire galaxy coming right through. Just looking gorgeous. And obviously, you know, you take a 10 minute stack on this, you know, tease out way more detail. There's a few adjacent galaxies nearby, but you're getting this with uh, five seconds of exposure. <laughs> and uh, it's looking great tonight. I just took a screenshot there. Yeah. That's uh, M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, in your driveway, on your iPad screen. Saved it. Good to go. I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. Um, you know, we'll go to the next object, but you get the idea. You can see multiple objects a night with ASI Air. All right, got the telescope back in the garage. It has since gone below freezing. I think I'm gonna warm up and get some hot tea. I thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you're learning lots about astronomy and electronically assisted astronomy and imaging and anything I can do to help you out. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you love what we're doing here. I love making astronomy videos for you and I uh, hope to have some exciting content up for you soon and see you next time, clear skies.